Today I'm gonna show a budget gaming mouse under $30, which is the HyperX Pulsefire Core with RGB lighting. So let's start it. This review is not gonna be full of specs reading, but I'd like to give you valuable information about the mouse. Right off the bat, I would like to speak about the design, which I personally do like, maybe because it's got some uh, matte black finish, but no, not only because of that. I also like the ergonomics and the weight of it. At first it was a little bit uh, weird to hold after my Razer Basilisk X Hyperspeed, but after a couple of days I totally got used to it. We can see some glossy plastic around the mouse and some textured plastic on the sides, but I haven't had any problem with that. And I mention this because I've read a couple of times that it can be slippery, but that wasn't the case for me. I know that rubber is more premium, and I have rubber on the sides of my Razer Basilisk X Hyperspeed, but I haven't really noticed much of a difference. The bottom of the mouse has two extra large feet, so the gliding is seamless, and there is no switches at all. For example, on my Abyssus mouse I had two switches, one for the DPI change and the other one is for the polling rate change. In terms of weight, this is a lightweight contender with its 87 grams of weight and for example my Abyssus mouse was also pretty lightweight and I like those mice because you can play for a longer period of time without fatigue and also you can be quicker with those. One of the drawbacks that I found on this mouse was the paint on the right button which worn off despite the fact that it was pretty rarely used, so I had to send it back under warranty. Other than that, I think this is a pretty good mouse, especially for this price, which is below 30 US dollars. Uh, right at the moment, it's for about 25 dollars on Amazon. As I said in the bearing of the video, it has RGB lighting, but it's only on one spot, and uh, while we are playing some games, or we are using the mouse, we don't see this RGB lighting because we cover it with our hands. I'm gonna show later on how we can customize the lighting, which is only possible through the software called Ingenuity. You see that the body is somewhat symmetric, so you may think that also left-handed people can use it, but that's not true because there are some side buttons on the left, and those are designed for right-handed people. And by the way, those buttons, those side buttons are really pleasant to use and easy to reach. The braided 1.8 meter long cable is really cool and quiet. You don't really feel that this mouse is wired. Using it after my wireless mouse, I haven't really noticed that this one is wired. My Abyssus mouse has had a really rigid and loud cable and it was annoying sometimes. So basically, the cable of this mouse is really good. There's seven programmable buttons, including the DPI changer, the forward-backward buttons and the remaining classical ones. The design of the scroll wheel is like the tires on the Mars rover. I really like it. The right button is a little bit loose. But the left button is really good. And also the other ones are quite good too. What's really important to mention that if you want to click the scroll wheel button, then you need a little more force to click it than you need to click the other buttons. So if you're playing games which are heavy on the scroll wheel, I mean to click it a lot of times, then maybe you should choose another mouse. And here comes the click sound test.
Well, the software is not the best part of this product. If you want to install it, you need to do it through the Microsoft Store, so there's no option to use it be the Linux or Mac. And it's a beta version. You can't minimize it to the system tray, only to your taskbar. And if you would like to keep your settings after you close the app, you should save those into the mouse itself because it has onboard memory and you can save those in the software itself. Saving settings to the mouse in order to use it with other PC works in a way that as long as you don't start the Ingenuity software on the other PC, you are using the saved profile which is in the mouse, but as soon as you start the software, you are using some other kind of settings. All right, here we can see the software. If you have another kinds of HyperX product, then they can show up on the left side here. We have three main menu sections, lights, buttons, sensor. In the lights, you can set different settings for the lights. Here we have different kind of effects. You can choose which one do you want to use like this. I'm gonna go with the breathing. You can change the opacity, the color, the speed of it and you can also save it to the mouse to the onboard memory and here you can see the presets and you can also link the presets to different games all right here we can see the next section uh, these two buttons mouse one and mouse two can be only swept between each other but for the other buttons you can basically set any kind of functionality, even macros. And in the sensor section, out of the box, you have three kind of DPI settings and you don't even need the software to use those. For example, if you set the 800 DPI without the software and you restart your PC, then when the PC restarts, it's gonna go with the 800 DPI settings. And uh, you can also add like new DPI settings. You can also choose the colors to it. Here you can set the brightness of this lighting. Basically is the same as this opacity. The polling rate. In the settings section, you can set different kind of things. Language, for example, and you can see the software version here and the firmware version here. The user experience is great for gaming and for other tasks as well, for example just browsing the web or any other kind of activities. I played Warzone and Quake Champions and I think this is a decent mouse and I also think that I played better with this one than with my Razer Basilisk X Hyperspeed which is a much heavier gaming mouse. I have an average sized hand and I use all the mice with palm grip style every time. Also, I think that the back of the mouse is really big for claw type of holding. I've read almost all the reviews and the comments about this mouse on the internet and pretty much most of the complaints were about the software. Other than that, for example, there was one guy who had some concerns that if he plugs the cable into a USB hub, the mouse won't work properly, but that's not true because I've tested it and it works okay. So overall, I think that this is a great mouse with good build quality, especially for this price, because you always have to take the price into account and you can use it perfectly even without the software. All right, that's been it. Thanks for watching. I hope it was useful. Let me know in the comment section if you have any kind of questions. 
please hit the like button if you found it useful and also don't forget to subscribe because it's for free and it makes me super heavy so talk to you in the next video guys see you bye bye